Hello, this video will be on the basics of assembling your V6 hot end. For this video, you will need the components from your V6 kit. This includes heat brake, heat sinks, heater block, nozzle, heater, and thermistor. Thermal paste is also recommended. You'll need some Allen keys and wrenches. Now, for your heat sinks, there are several different styles. Uh, two most common you'll see are groove mount and threaded. Uh, this style right here is mostly used in deltas for attaching the V6 to a effector. Uh, if you ordered this style for your Voron build, uh, you're going to have to order a new heatsink because this style is not compatible with the Voron quick change tool head at this time. Of the thread mount, there are two really different styles. Um, the newer styles come with this plastic clip-in Bowden connector whereas the older styles uh, were simply threaded and you would have to screw in a Bowden connector. Either of these will work, this one takes up a little bit more room, but I've used both these and they work just fine. So with the newer style, this is a plastic one, it just clips in. You take the little clip out, you put your Bowden tube in, and then once it's in and at the bottom, you put the clip back in and that locks it into place. To start the assembly, uh, you're going to want to take your heater block, install the set screw, and the button head screw here. You're going to take your nozzle, and you're going to screw it in until it bottoms out. You can just do this by hand. And then once it's bottomed out, you're going to back it off anywhere from a quarter to an eighth of a turn. And then you're going to take your heat brake. you notice it is threaded on two sides with a space in the middle. The smaller, shorter side is going to screw into the heater block, again by hand, until it touches the nozzle. And at this point, it's going to give it a little snug. Don't over tighten it at this point. Now once this is assembled, you're going to want to uh, screw this into your heat sink. So for the heat brake, at this point you're going to want to put some thermal paste on these threads. This way, any heat that makes it up the heat brake will dissipate into the heat sink much quicker and more efficiently. It does work without the thermal paste, however it is recommended that you do put it on, it'll work better. Most kits do come with thermal paste, however I just use uh, some old CPU thermal paste that I've had kicking around since forever. Don't need to go overkill, just apply some to the threads. Put too much on and it oozes out, just wipe it off. And then you're going to want to screw it on. Now I just use an adjustable wrench here to hold the block when I tighten everything up. One downside with the V6 style hot end is the heat brake itself. Um, you want it as thin as possible so the least amount of heat makes its way up but it's also structural so it can be damaged very easily so you have to be careful not to over tighten anything or bend anything because these will break relatively easily. So that is the hardware of your V6 assembled. At this point you're going to want to install your heater. Simply fits into the larger hole and then you take your Allen key and tighten it up. And then with your thermistor, same thing, it slides into the smaller hole. And then again, use your Allen key to tighten it. And there we go. And that is how you assemble a V6 hot end. You can put these in either side, depends on how you are doing your cable management. What I like to do is just leave everything long until it's installed and then trim to length after. Now one thing to keep in mind is again at this point we have not torqued our nozzle to spec. You will be doing that when the nozzle is hot. The reason for that is metal expands under heat and you want everything tightened at the temperature it will be operating at. 
that means is before you actually go to print with this thing, you're going to heat it up to the temperature you're most likely going to be printing at. And then you're going to tighten it again. Now, these right here, uh, I'll link to the file below. They're on Thingiverse. It's a printable torque wrench. This one right here is a 1.5 uh, Newton meter force one. Uh, E3D, I believe, specs three Newton meters for torquing their nozzle. So once it's installed in your printer, you're going to want to use your adjustable wrench or something else to hold the heater block. Again, you're going to have wires coming out of this, so you'll probably have to grip it from this side. And then either with your wrench, if you just want to eyeball it, or with a torque wrench, you're going to want to go in again and just tighten it to the torque that it's specified to be torqued to. If you don't tighten your nozzle properly, you'll have a gap between the nozzle and the heat break, and this will cause plastic to ooze out. You don't want that. Also, a loose nozzle can come, you know, more loose as you print, and you, you don't want anything moving here. This will screw up your prints. Of course, once your hot end's installed, everything's torqued, you can take one of these socks and put that over the heater block itself. What this does is it insulates the heater block so it's less susceptible to temperature changes from part fans and it kind of keeps the heat in as well. I do run with these. Another advantage is silicone the plastic doesn't really stick to too well so if you get a lot of boogers uh, or you know you see the pictures of gunked up hot ends this will prevent that from happening to a degree and if it does happen usually you can just kind of peel off the mess and then these are a few bucks on aliexpress the triangle lab ones are good or the legit e3d ones are good as well i do like the socks they do come in handy one other thing i do want to touch on is a safety thing uh, with your heaters you are going to want to check the resistance before you install them. The reason for that is most printers are either 12 or 24 volts. So you can buy heaters that are either 12 or 24 volts. This right here is a 50 watt heater that's 24 volt. This is a 50 watt heater that's 12 volt. If you know I'm not paying attention and I mix them up or the ones are improperly labeled or they're not labeled at all and you just trust that you know AliExpress store to send you the right ones, you could be in a very bad situation. So with your heaters, you wanna take your multimeter, make sure it can read ohm, and you are gonna to want to check the resistance on them before you install them. So this right here has a resistance of 3.5 ohm. And this one right here has a resistance of about 11.8 ohm. So this right here is the 24 volt heater. Now it states 50 watts, which 24 volts at 11.9 ohms of resistance is 48 watts. This one right here at 12 volts at 3.5 ohms of resistance is actually only about 41, 42 watts. So you do wanna ensure you're getting you know, the wattage you want. The big issue is if you feed the wrong voltage to your heater, you're going to be in some serious trouble. If you were to feed 24 volts to this 12 volt heater, according to the math, 24 volts at 3.5 ohm resistance is 164 watts. That is way overpowered for a 3D printer heat cartridge. Uh, you're probably going to start a fire. Both printers have thermal one array protection hopefully your printer stops it but you are looking at potentially some serious damage if you run your printer with the incorrect heater cartridge so thank you for following along i am going to try and branch out into some more uh, generic 3d printing tips and tricks and how-to videos in the next little while um, voron stuff will still mostly be the mainstay of this channel However, I would like to cover some other stuff in 3D printing uh, as well. If you do have any questions, please feel free to post them below or hit me up in the Voron Discord. Thank you.
and have a great night.